process that allows us to perform reactions under inner atmosphere. They consist of two glass tubes. So these two that are connected to various ports. Um, there are kind of two styles that vary on the way the ports are set up. This is the type with Teflon stoppers. These can allow the flow of either your inert gas or your um, open up to your vacuum line. Um, they're nice because they're interchangeable, easily replaced, easy to clean, but they do allow that vacuum and your inert gas could be on at the same time. So with the two gas, the two parts of the manifold, we have this lower one, which is for the vacuum, and you see it's connected to this dark hose, which goes down to the vacuum pump. And then the upper one, which is our inert gas. The inert gas can be nitrogen or argon. Those are the common ones. Other gases are also possible, but the most common are again, nitrogen and argon. The inert gas comes in usually through um, a tank or a dewer of some kind, and this bubbler here is used to um, indicate the flow and also prevent backflow of the gas through the system. Um, so here we can see the inlet bubbler for this system letting nitrogen in, and the outlet bubbler is over here. You can see gas is coming out through the outlet bubbler there at about the same rate. And it's important that the in rate is equal to the out rate, um, otherwise you know that you're building pressure somewhere or the system is leaking and you need to shut a valve off or address the leak. So Teflon stoppers are notorious for being um, easy to over tighten. So you can look at the, um, the stopper itself and you can see this kind of thin white line up here on the glass, about right there. You can see that, that means you've got a good seal and that's all it takes. If you go farther beyond that, you can actually destroy the end of the stopper, which will make the seal worse in the future. And on the thinner ones, like for the, um, for the, uh, the Schlenk manifold itself, you can get, you can, if you twist these too hard, you can actually break the glass, which you don't want to do. So yeah, you're just looking for that that thin line. Um, see this one is has been a bit deformed. You can see how it's that much blunter looking shape there. So just looking for that thin white line to appear. That one's also a bit thicker, but that one doesn't take much to tighten either. So, so the other style of, a uh, common style of Schlenk apparatus is this kind with the glass stop cocks. So we can see here this front line, it's been conveniently labeled as the nitrogen, and the, the, the one behind is for vacuum. Uh, you can see it connected here to the trap and the vacuum connection over there. Um, these stoppers work um, differently, so in this case up connects the nitrogen line through the diagonal portion of the stopcock and then to the um, tube. And then if you turn the opposite direction, the revert the rear portion, so the vacuum line is then connected to the tube. And then horizontal is off, off position for both. And you can see here how this um, style prevents vacuum and gas from being connected to your line at the same time. And this one also has more ports. This one has five ports. The vacuum pump for this hood is located here underneath in this cabinet and this switch. Turn it on. Is here on the side. The other vacuum pumps in the lab are located here. Um, this pump is turned on by just plugging it in up there, and this one has a switch. And it's cord right here. 
So now that our schlink line is prepared, um, and say we have this flask here that we want to cycle so that we can put solvent in it from this um, storage flask of dry solvent. Um, the first thing we would need to do is evacuate the inside of the flask um, so that we can then refill it with our inert gas. So the first thing we need to do is open up our vacuum port here. So I have this connected to this port here. This is the vacuum port. So our key here is closed. So I'm gonna open this to vacuum. There. The gurgling of the pump should stop shortly. And then once we've got vacuum in here, we can slowly open this key on our flask. And we wanna do that so that we have more control over the conditions there and so that when we open the vacuum here, we don't just, we can sometimes pull some of the solid into the line. It doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. We're going to do the same thing for the um, kind of the head space so that the, the tube and this top area of our storage our Strauss flask here so just open that vacuum since there's no solid in there we don't have to worry about whether or not the key is open to start so we'll just open that vacuum right up all right and then we'll let that pump on those for five minutes and then come back to do a inert gas fill So after we have um, evacuated the flask for five minutes, go ahead and close my key again and turn off the vacuum up here. And we can open up the nitrogen side so the valve above it. And we'll fill this with nitrogen. So the nitrogen bubbler, that's the in bubbler. Once that's um, been refilled, we can slowly crack open our key here to let the nitrogen into our evacuated flask. Um, again, this is just so that when we open this, that the solid in there doesn't go flying around and just potentially get into our line. And it kind of does anyway. Anyway. And once that's refilled, my out bubbler is coming out so I'm guessing that that's filled. Go ahead and close it again. Turn off the nitrogen. Open the vacuum. And just repeat like before. And then we uh, want to pull a vacuum on that three times and then at the very end leave it under nitrogen to be used for the next step.